Hello, Daniel Stein here. I'm going to show you a few features that came out this week in Revit 2022.1 and we'll compare those against what is currently in Revit 2021.1. So the first thing we'll look at is the ability to duplicate a sheet. Which in 2021 and previous that's not possible. So let's go to 2022.1. And you'll notice this has a level one phase two view on it. So if we right click and select duplicate, we actually have options now. Duplicate empty sheet, duplicate with sheet detailing, Duplicate with views. So duplicate with views is going to duplicate the view and we have the option here of how we would normally duplicate a view itself. Just duplicate, duplicate with detailing or duplicate as dependent. So if you want just the view without any notes and dimensions, you'd pick this one with notes and dimensions. And then as a dependent view, which might be a zone A and a zone B, um, let's do duplicate with detailing. And so you can see it made a copy of the view which we'd expect to find up above in the project browser under views. The next feature that we're going to look at um, is the ability to select things. So if I go to a floor plan view where I just dropped in a couple of reference planes and annotation lines in 2021 and uh, just the previous version of 2022 and all previous versions. Uh, if you go to select all instances of a reference plane, you can't. Select all instances of annotation line work, you can't. So we'll go over to 2022. Pretty easy to show, you can. So in view or in entire project. So this project uh, apparently has 13 reference planes in it. And then an annotation line uh, in view. So there's just the two that I dropped in here and um, this gives us now a really easy way to change those lines to something else. Another interesting feature in 2022, I don't even need to go into 2021 because there's nothing there to show. This is something totally new that's been layered on. If we go into snaps, you'll see there's a new option here. Snap mid between two points. So snap to the midpoint between the two points you select. So that would be S2 for a shortcut or it's also available in a right click. Um, and there's several different ways in which you might use this. Um, and I guess for now I'll just draw a line. So maybe we wanted to draw a line right between these two chairs. Um, so I could type S2 or I can right click and go to snap mid between two points and then one point, two point, and now I have a line there. Um, I could also just place this chair that way. Of course this will depend on the, you have to know where the chair insertion point is, but create similar I just typed S2 And there it is. So that, that's a pretty handy new feature. Um, another cool thing is to find something in the project browser. I have this chair selected and where is it in the in the family section in the project browser. If I right click there is an option here find in project browser and it just jumped me right to it. So maybe I have been accidentally placing a different type that's close to this one and I want to come here and delete that extra type 
just so I don't keep making that mistake or whatever. It's, it's a really handy feature. Uh, another handy feature, um, a lot of these are really simple but really helpful for just regular tasks. If I go to create a schedule or I'm in a, the schedule editor, uh, there's a bunch of these dialog boxes have a search now. So if I wanted to find, oh, this is actually just searching for categories, so doors, just to jump to it right away. <clears throat> so lots of, lots of ways to get at the information you need quicker. Another cool thing in the family editor we can now duplicate parameters, so we don't have to go through the process of picking the type and perhaps entering a formula. And that's right here, duplicate parameter. We have an opportunity to give it a name and not just have it have a two at the end right away. So that's all there is to that. If it's a formula, of course, the formula will be there and you can make some tweaks to the parameters that it's referencing and whatnot. And then the very last thing I'll just mention and won't show is there's some new format support. So now apparently you can import and export STL and OBJ files. So here it is, we can export OBJ and STL files. And then there's also improved support for SketchUp 2021 format, and then a certain element type within Rhino 7. I don't remember exactly what it was. But that's a quick rundown on what's new in Revit 2022.1. Thanks for watching.